Hi, this is Chris Wall at the Wall Network, and today I'm going to go over unified ports within Cisco UCS. Now in front of you I've got a connection to UCS Manager made to my UCS platform emulator, which is a virtual machine that runs in the Wall Network lab and kind of pretends to be UCS. The cool thing here is the unified port information that I'm giving you and the steps that I'll show are exactly the same in a real environment as they are in the emulator. So it gives me a very easy way to show you what the, the steps are without having to take down any kind of lab system or, or goof with any production system. So to start with, when I go into UCS Manager and I want to mess with unified ports, I always locate which of the two interconnects is the subordinate. I'm going to kind of collapse this down. So I can see right here interconnect B is the subordinate interconnect. And basically that means of the cluster of the two fabric interconnects, this one is not the lead interconnect within the cluster. I like to go ahead and mess with the subordinate first in pretty much every event because if I have to reboot it and, and with unified port changes, the interconnect is going to need to restart. I won't lose my connection to UCS Manager because I've connected to the cluster IP address, which is currently being serviced by the primary interconnect. So I can click on interconnect B here for the subordinate, and let's go right into unified ports. So here's just kind of a, a standard what it would look like to click on it interface. I've got just two chassis connected, four ports per chassis, and really nothing else is configured. It's all brown, which means administratively down. And the first item in the actions list right here says configure unified ports. So I'm going to click on this link first, and there'll be a warning coming up basically saying if you're going to make any changes to the unified port configuration, we are going to need to reboot the Fabric Interconnect. So just be aware that this is going to be something you want to plan around to avoid an outage. If you do it right, if we do the subordinate interconnect, let it reboot, come back up, reform the cluster, then we go into the primary, you should be just fine. You don't want to do this to both interconnects at the same time. That would be bad news. So I'm going to click yes, and at this point, you're not committing to a reboot. You're just saying yes, you acknowledge the fact that what you change here may cause a reboot. So first, we're going to look at the fixed module ports. And you'll see each one kind of has a blue little square with a with a uh, gray uh, box next to it. Basically, the fact blue means Ethernet and purple means fiber channel. And by default, everything is Ethernet. This is a stock configuration. Everything says transport type Ether, and the role is either server or unconfigured. Now, the hidden part, or at least kind of the, the hard-to-find part, there's this slider. It's actually right here. This is a slider bar. And when you slide this back and forth, this determines how many ports will be fiber channel or Ethernet. So I'll set it right here, and you'll see these all change to purple. So basically everything to the right of this slider bar is now fiber channel, and everything to the left is Ethernet. So there's no way to do uh, half, a, half a port. You can only do two ports at a time. Like when I slide it, I can't do halfway between the two to get just one of the two ports. I can only do two ports at a time. Uh, between the two ports right here. So you basically can do two, four, six, eight, etc. A lot of times we'll just leave it at no more than eight. Uh, pretty common to see just four ports used for fiber channel. Or if you're not using any fiber channel ports, you, you don't you, you know you have IP for your SAN, maybe ice because your NFS, you could have none. So that's that's how you do that. I'm gonna leave it at eight ports right here. And if I scroll down here it says that currently these are Ethernet unconfigured ports. But the interface role will change to FC uplink. That's IF role. Is interface role will change to FC uplink. So it's letting you know what's going to happen, which ports are being changed, and it corresponds to the graphic. Now, if you have an expansion port module, you can click on this link down at the bottom, and it'll give you a nice, you know, close and personal look at this E16UP. Uh, it actually says the model right there as well, and UP means unified port. So it's the same kind of deal. It's a white slider bar right here. And if I slide it and grab maybe eight ports there, they turn purple, meaning that we've got fiber channel ports. If I scroll down here, it'll show you that they're fiber channel ports. And if I were to make a change on just the expansion module, that expansion module would be uh, restarted. But since I've made a change to both the fixed module ports and the expansion module ports, when I click Finish, it's going to let me know that the fabric interconnect and or the expansion modules will be rebooted. So because I've made a change to both, the whole thing will be rebooted. 
uh, I can click yes and this is the moment of truth at this point you want to make absolutely sure that when you click yes rebooting this is going to be okay make sure that um, you've got the other interconnect is up and that your HA cluster is both uh, a, a state of up and ready for takeover so I'll click yes real quick now because this is an emulator there's no actual reboot you know it just does it immediately as you can see um, these ports have been taken out of the brown admin down uh, for Ethernet and it's automatically already back up into a ready status of yes and the HA state is up so th this is kinda what I was talking about where we want to make sure that this is a, a yes for the ready and an up for the state meaning that the other node will take over the cluster while this one's busy rebooting so once this actually rebooted in your physical environment and comes back up and returns to a state of yes and up for high availability you'd want to go ahead and make the same change to the other fabric interconnect so if I click on that again this one is the primary node it's up and it's ready so we would do the same kind of thing configure unified ports accept the fact that there may be a reboot reboot and I like to mirror the config so if I grabbed eight ports here I do the same for that guy and then for the expansion module the same deal I'd grab the eight eight ports over here oh you gotta be a little careful to grab it and then finish and yes and it would take take that change and reboot that other node and most likely because I reset the primary node now I would lose my connection to UCS Manager and have to reconnect in and B would become the lead. But that's pretty much it. As long as you two do this kind of domino where we do B first or the subordinate first, let it reboot, come all the way back up, reform the HA cluster, then do A. You can do this pretty much any time. But I'll, I'll put a little asterisk there. As with anything in IT, doing a reboot, doing maintenance, doing changes, there's always a risk, no matter how well you've designed the system there's always something that can go wrong so I will caution it's been in my experience it's a good idea to do this during a maintenance window get your change control filled out make sure everyone approves the fact that this shouldn't cause an outage but it might uh, and you know don't do it at you know two o'clock in the middle of a Wednesday unless that's when business is at its lull and that's pretty much it it's pretty straightforward thank you for watching this video if you found the information valuable, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos on my channel, please become a subscriber. For more articles on technical solutions and home lab building, achieving certifications, and so on, head on over to wallnetwork.com. Thank you.